readers, our next book of the day is The Smart Cookie, written by Jory John and Pete Oswald. The Smart Cookie. Any predictions, readers? Use the clues. See what you notice in the title, the pictures. What do you know about Jory John's books and Pete Oswald's? Think about a pattern across a series of how that could help us make predictions too. Look here, look at the clues. Let's pause here and make some predictions of what we think the smart cookie might be about. Greetings, I'm a cookie. I live in a bakery on a street corner near a river. Sweet street, bakery, come on in. Welcome to our little community. It's a warm and supportive place to spend some time. Pretty fantastic, eh? Huh? These days, life is sweet, but my journey wasn't always a cakewalk. When I was younger, I couldn't have imagined fitting in here. Bakery. Hmm, closed. For a long time, I didn't feel comfortable speaking up or sharing my ideas. I didn't feel like a smart cookie. I wanted to be a cookie who knew all the answers, a cookie who felt confident in a group, a cookie who said, aha, when solving a puzzle, like this, aha. Looking back, I had some trouble in my early days. I went to school in a gingerbread house. Our teacher, Mrs. Biscotti, was kind and patient. When I arrived each morning, she'd wave at me and smile. But I didn't get the best grades, report card. And I never raised my hand because I couldn't think of the answers as fast as the others. And I was the last to finish nervous tests. Sigh. It wasn't because I didn't care, and it wasn't because I didn't try. Sometimes I'd get distracted and mess up, even though I knew the material. Those were the most frustrating, frustrating moments of all. Once I misspelled the word dough. That was rough. What'd the smart cookie do? How? That says dough. What was wrong? Another time, I added when I meant to subtract. 2 minus 2 equals 4. Occasionally, we'd have a lesson where I had absolutely no idea what was happening. I just couldn't keep up. I imagined that my desk was a raft and that I was completely lost to sea because that's what I felt like, or that's what it felt like. At night, I slept in a cookie jar. I had about six dozen roommates. Move, you move. No, you move. No, you move. No, you move. I'd stay awake and stare out the window and worry. A sigh. And it went this way, day after day, after day. But then something happened that changed everything. <gasps> what? Let's make a prediction here, readers. Let's pause. What? Then something happened? How was the story starting? So she kind of did a flashback, right? She flashed back to let us know where everything started, but... 
the smart cookie started off at the bakery and said she kind of got there. But we're kind of seeing that it was a little bit hard, right? So what might this something happen that changed everything be? Turn and talk. It all started with a homework assignment. Mrs. Biscotti requested our attention one afternoon. <clears throat> Tonight, I would like you to create something completely original, she announced. It can be anything you want. Please bring it to class tomorrow. Homework. That was it. There were no further instructions. Ms. Biscotti winked at me as I gathered my belongings. I felt like I had a million butterflies in my stomach. What? Create anything? What? Oh, something original? <gasps> Do tomorrow? Oh. Gulp. How's your character feeling, readers? Why? When I got home, I immediately went to work. At first, I tried a cooking project. The results were half-baked. Next, I tried to hammer and nail something. It splintered immediately. Then I tried making a sculpture. It was a complete bust. I wondered if I was about to fail yet another assignment. I was stuck. I stared out the window and watched the rain hit the river. There was something mesmerizing about the water, how it moved in such a chaotic way, swirling around and around, yet ultimately figuring out exactly where it needed to go. Aha! Suddenly, I had an idea. I decided to write something original, a poem. I came up with the title based on how I'd been feeling. My crumby, my crumby days. After that, the rest of it seemed to fall into place. I wrote and I wrote. I lost track of time. An hour went by in a flash. Aha, I said when I was finished. I couldn't sleep that night, but it wasn't because I was worried. It was because I was excited. I felt like I had really accomplished something. And I felt smart. The following day, Ms. Biscotti asked for volunteers to share what we created. One kid showed off his original frosting art. Ooh, that's cool. Another kid revealed her sprinkle distribution <laughs> machine. Whoa, it's like a Rube Goldberg machine there. That is so cool. It was neat seeing how Everyone was good at such different things. Look at the science. Finally, Ms. Biscotti turned to me. Would you like to share anything? She asked. Gulp. I gulped. I thought I'd probably crumble under the pressure. But I made my way to the front of the classroom. I noticed my hands were shaking and my mouth went dry. Um, 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 this poem is called My Cr Crumby Days, I said, my voice cracking, and then I read it aloud. As I spoke, I noticed some kids nodding at certain lines. Other kids laughed at parts that were supposed to be funny. As I built toward the finale, I felt myself becoming more confident and animated. And in the end, everybody clapped and cheered. I promise you this, I'll never, ever 
forget it. Ms. Biscotti was beaming. No one but you could have written that poem, she said. It was completely original. How's she feeling now, readers? Look at the clues. Look at the clues. What changed? Aha! I had done it. I'd created something and shared it with the world. Well, my world at least. The rest of the day was a blur. By recess, I was already planning my next poem. I would call it My Sweet Morning. Aha! I thought when I came up with the title. Later that afternoon, Miss Biscotti handed me a note. It said that I should keep on writing no matter what. And that meant so much to me. What happened? School was a bit different after that. I wasn't so scared to raise my hand or ask a question or share my work. Sure, some things still don't come as easily for me as they do for others. Bonk. But now I know that you can be smart in many different ways. Let's talk about each one. Where is she showing smart? You don't have to have the answers to every question or suddenly be great at everything all at once. You just need a chance to try all kinds of things to find out who you are and what you like to do. As for me, I learned that I can write and I can think up great ideas. And I have found plenty of other things I'm good at too. I no longer feel lost at sea. It's more like floating down a river. And the best part is there's always more to learn. Poetry night. Because we're all smart cookies. Aha, aha, aha. What'd we learn, readers? What'd the smart cookie learn? And what'd we learn about ourselves? What'd we learn about others? Happy reading.